And welcome back to the 20 Strongest Captain Class Shinigami video. We are now looking at number 13, which is Gin Ichimaru. Gin was a really difficult guy to place on this list. Because, to be honest, we never truly saw his full capability. We saw enough that I could put him on the list, obviously. We never, like, we knew he knew Kido. We know he was actually pretty good at Kido. But we never really saw him use much in the way of Kido. Um, like we saw him use a little bit here and there, but there's that. And his Zanpakuto, while simplistic, is pretty powerful, especially his Bankai. So it was really difficult to kind of put where he kind of belonged properly on this. Uh, obviously, if you're not aware of what Shinso is, uh, what Shinso does, which I would be amazed if you didn't, because obviously if you're watching this, you're probably a Bleach fan, uh, or at least have knowledge of Bleach is that Shinso's ability is that it can extend about 100 swords length, to be, uh, be exact. And it can extend pretty quickly. It's not instantaneous or anything like that, but it's a very fast, very powerful Zanpakuto. It's able, to, it's not only capable of extending, it's actually capable of extending at extreme speed and extreme force to the point where it blew up a bunch of hollow heads. It threw Ichigo back at high velocity. When it basically when uh, Ichimaru tagged him when he uh, made it into Soul Society the first time, it's uh, it is actually a pretty strong Zanpakuto, with it, even though it's a pretty simplistic in, uh, ability. So then you get into its Bankai, which obviously, as he even said, is not as fast or as long as he stated, but it's fast enough to uh, contract and exp uh, extend near instantaneously. Like still, it might not be as fast as he said. It might not be five hundred times faster than sound. But it's still fast enough that Ichigo couldn't register when it retracted. Uh, and it was long enough to cut through an entire town within an instant. Uh, but its true ability, obviously, Kamishina no Yara's ability, is its instant kill. There is poison inside the blade. And it briefly turns to dust when it expands and contracts. And if he leaves a sliver of the blade in you, all he has to do is say, Kill Kamishina no Yari. And it basically... Uh, breaks you down on a molecular level. Uh, it, it destroys your it destroys your cells. It, it would have killed Isa had he not been basically implanted with the Hogyoku. So, with that said, how did I feel that Gein stacked up as a captain? And I'll be honest, maybe my opinions could even change as I'm going through this. But, going down the list, he did not fare well against Yamamoto or uh, Ichibei. Now, it should be noted that all the other individuals on this list are legitimate captains. Uh, though we don't, I don't believe Ichiba was ever a captain per se. He he's still a captain in in terms of power minimum. Uh, but all are captains, so they fared a lot better even in the fights they lost against than compared to someone like Shuhei or Renji or anything like that because they were legitimate captains. But Ichima, uh, but um, against Yama, um, Shinso could probably get through the flames without too much difficulty. It's just that Gein himself doesn't have any defense against the flames. If this came down to Yamamoto, you, and so in Shika to Shika, Yamamoto's going to be able to outpace him. Plus, he has vast knowledge of Kido, Shimpo, all that. So it, that's not in question. Bankai to Bankai is a very different story because speed wise, he stated that his Bankai was actually the fastest Bankai, not the longest Bankai. So. He, it's very, it's very difficult to say. In theory, he could kill Yamamoto with the Kamashina no Yari. He could. He could get a, um, he could in fact get a kill shot on him if he were to get the jump on him, get a surprise on him. The problem is Yamamoto is so experienced and so powerful that, because I mean, Ichigo was able to counteract Kamashina no Yari's speed, at least initially. So I would have to believe that Yamamoto could also do that. He's on a level that he could do that. And then if we're talking about his Bankai versus Ichimaru, while momentum is a extremely powerful force, the Bankai would still, the sword would still get incinerated because literally Yamamoto burns with the heat of the sun. So it would just incinerate the bong, the blade before it even touched him. So there, right there, I, I have to give the win to Yama. Ichime is a bit more of a, would be a bit more contested because obviously the blade cuts and the blade and the sword cuts names in half, and then if it gets ink on it, it loses its name. So, right off the bat, there's a problem there, but Gein is also a tricky fighter, and fights at a distance most of the time because of his sword. So, 
It's a matter of could he have gotten the drop on uh, Ichibe. I will say this. I think actually he stood a better chance surprisingly against Ichibe than he did against Yama because he, Ichibe doesn't have an ability inherently uh, negating Kamishin and Noyari. He could certainly stop Kamishin and Noyari. He's skilled enough. He's fast enough. He's powerful enough. Sure. But if he got hit with Kam he couldn't. if he got a surprise hit by Kamishin and Noyari, there would be nothing that stops Gein from killing him. Ultimately, though, because he's just got the experience, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the overall strength to com uh, to completely overwhelm him in most general scenarios, I did have to give the win win to uh, Yama and um, Yama and I think words here Ichibe uh, against Soyphone. Also, he uh, he doesn't fare as well uh, in certain regards, but I do think he beats Soyphone, and the reason for that is. His Bankai, is act or his sword, is really a good counter to her sword. He's skilled enough to avoid uh, any probably any lethal shot from Suzume Baji. So, the two-step kill, doesn't have to worry about that. He's not as skilled as Shimpo or hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat as Soifun, though. That one I give the Soifun all the way. But again, the problem really becomes down to, he's devious enough, skilled enough, that he's not. she's not going to be able to get a kill shot on him. And his Shinso is tricky enough that she He's gonna have to be tricky. Uh, gonna have to avoid that. Ultimately, it would, it, if it came down to Bonkai to Bonkai, she's screwed. He can slice her Bonkai in half before she even fires the damn thing, blowing up in her face, and then just again Kamishina Nagari her. So really, she again speed wise, she can probably keep up with Kamishina Nagari, but in terms of the ability and the trickiness of Gein himself, you know, I, I can't say she would actually win. I think she would flat out lose to him. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't um, edit this uh, image down. So, Gein fighting himself. Gein wins. Gein loses. There you go. Um, against Rose. Rose was another one who I actually think he beats Rose. In fact, I believe I've already stated that I think he beats Rose in the Rose video. The reason for this is very simple. Uh, the, uh, Gein's, uh, Rose's Bankai, or Shikai, is a whip, and it's good for grabbing things, but Kamishin and Yari's ex uh, expanding and contracting ability Really plays as a good counter to that, so even if he grabs it, he just gets it out of there. Bankai the Bankai, Rose would be screwed, because he tries to... He might initially get the effects off on Gein, but Gein only just has to point his sword at him. doesn't matter the range, really. It just has to stab him, and then he kills him. So, yeah, Rose, Rose would lose to Gein. I have no doubt about that. Unahana! Unfortunately, this is where Gein, Gein really fails hard at uh, take, trying to take on Unahana. Uh, and that simply comes down to the fact that, as a swordsman, she's far better. She's the first Kenpachi for a reason. Her Shikai can heal wounds. Uh, it probably can be cut in half, though, by Shinso, but still. She is a Kido and Kaido master. And then her Bankai, again, we'll get in more into this when we talk about her. But again, she's much farther down the list. I'm not going to say where she ranked, but she's much farther on the list. Um... It seems to it seems to be playing on Miyazuki Shikai, which used its stomach acid for healing, which represents the nurturing aspect of her personality. But her Bankai represents the bloodthirsty aspect, where it's still acid and it's still dissolving. Her Kaido is just so powerful that she was able to heal herself with it, or heal herself from being damaged herself. Well, you might think, well, yeah, Gin can keep a distance, sure, and then use Kamishino Yoyari. But the problem here is that Kamishino Yoyari is only great. At, I mean, it's great at, from distance and close range, but just assuming that she's not going to be in close range against him. And that acid, there's no, he can't, he's got no defense against that acid. So ultimately, he would lose that fight. I'm almost certain he would lose a fight to Unohana. Uh, then you get into a Shinji. Now, here's the weird thing Shinji was the present, obviously, for the fight against uh, Aizen with uh, Gein there as well. They never actually fought, though. The thing about it is, if those two actually had ever met in combat, I do think Shinji, Shinji Shikai Sakanade is actually better suited for dealing with someone like Gein, whose attacks, while tricky and difficult to deal with, are very straightforward. And because of that, Sakanade's ability would be very cumbersome on someone like Gein. Because, yes, he, he, he it's... He could, in theory, swing around in a full circle while using uh, Shinso or Kamishini no Yari. But all uh, all Shinji really has to do is just duck or, you know, jump it. And that's it. 
Um, so it, it, uh, that is the upshot to having an attack that has range and can just extend like it does, that he can just adapt and move from there. Uh, ultimately, though, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I think in a general fight, no, Shinji would beat... Because uh, uh, Shinji also, while he does... Well, he can toy with his opponent a little bit, he's not a... He's not a Rose where he's that cocky. Like, he went in to finish Eisen off originally. Like, he, he toyed with Eisen a little bit, kind of rightfully so. But then he went to get the final ki uh, blow in, and he still managed to actually get a cut in on Eisen. So, ultimately, Shinji, I think, would beat, uh, would beat um, Gein. Uh, Renji, on the other hand, and I already brought this up, would not. Because Renji's very much a close... His Zombacto is more of a mid-range type. It, it has length, but it only has so much length. It's more of a mid-range type. It doesn't get anywhere near as long as, say, Shinso does, or anything that can fire attack with range. So, like, um, so if one's Bankai is a long-range type. Uh, whereas Shinso is a long-range type, so really, Shikai to Shikai, Gein can keep his distance and ta uh, tag um, Renji pretty effectively. Not to mention, we know for a fact he is better at Keto than Renji is. Uh, Bankai to Bankai as well. Renji just gets cut straight in half, unless he blocks with his blade, which he might be able to do, but excuse me. Unfortunately, it would not end well for Renji just on the grounds that it, it moves so fast and it can do it so many times that Renji would just, his Bankai would get sliced up. He'd get sliced to hell. So Renji loses pretty hard against, uh, Gein, I'd say. Against Biakia. That one, unfortunately, yeah, Biakia still manages to... Now you might say, oh, but, uh, you know, Gein stabbed him in the um, Soul Society arc. Yeah, but that's because he was trying to defend Rukia. He, he took the blade on purpose to defend Rukia. That's not him um, losing to Gein. That's him just taking a shot from Gein. There you go. Um, to save someone he cared about. But against Biakia, yeah, Biakia is one of those guys that he's too well-rounded for someone like Gein to really handle. Uh, his Shin, his uh, Zembo and Zakara would, on its own, be able to block most of Gein's uh, attacks. Granted, we don't know if Shinzo has enough power to cut through Zembo and Zakara, but if it did, it's, his Bankai could easily compensate for that. He's got an, His speed is, at minimum, on uh, the same as Gein's, probably better. His knowledge of Keto is pro almost certainly far exceeds his. So, really, it's just a matter... It, it'd be a cool fight to watch in a, in a, as an actual fight. But, yeah, he, he, would, pretty, he would lose pretty hard to uh, Byakuya. Uh, and then Shunsui. Shunsui is another problem here. Is where Shunsui is so... Has so much variety in his attacks when it comes to Katen Kyotsu. Also, his knowledge of Keto. Uh, uh, again... Of the big three, it seems like these guys are, like, pretty maxed out. We really don't see much in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat when it comes to these guys. But it's implied that they're very skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's just not their preferred form of fighting. Um, but anyway, the dual blade also, and the fact he's ambidextrous, gives him an extra line of defense against Jinsa because not, most fighters have to block with both hands with their sword. Although someone like Kenpachi, who fights with one a sword, one hand, that's a different story. But still... Because he's got both blades, he can block with one and still attack with an attack with another. That gives Shunsui a massive advantage over Shinso uh, and Gin Ichimaru. Bankai to Bankai is actually even worse. If he tries to cut down or even use uh, Kamishino Yari's kill effect while, Shin, uh, while um, uh, Shunsui's in Bankai, the first down alone inflicts all wounds on the opponent. So if he cuts him in half, he gets cut in half. Or if he stabs him, or if he actually starts to, de you know, use the kill effect on him, he himself is going to disintegrate, which means right off the bat, he's going to lose. I mean, it would be a draw at that point, but still, that's, it'd be, it'd, I actually count this loss because it'd be his own damn fault for doing that. Uh, and then you factor in the poison, which, uh, the, uh, the illness, which, to be fair, still had a solid effect on, um, oh god, Lily Burrow. But Lily Burrow was a being light at that point. He, he's literally made of light. On an actual flesh body whatever if an actual person that probably is a much greater effect than normal he also almost certainly has more key to arc you know uh riatsu spiritual pressure than gene so the dongai abyss would probably be seriously effective and then obviously you get the suicide the, the, the threat of fate the razor wire that ultimately takes down gene so yeah gene loses severely against uh shunsui 
against uh, Sajin, however, he he owned Sajin pretty hard. Um, she got a Shikai, Sajin has the physical advantage. Uh, and even a bit of a rage advantage, if I'm going to be frank. But when you get the Bankai, even the Shikai versus uh, the Bankai, he can cut the Bankai, stab the Bankai, and Komamura is still going to be taking that damage. Talk about Bongo to Bongo, he sliced that thing in half. Komamura screwed. Because <laughs> that's the problem with him being so thoroughly connected, the Bankai and him. So yeah, Sajin, Sajin lost pretty hard against him. Against the respective ninth captains, we actually already went over this with Tozen in the, not the last video, the previous video. Uh, before that, I actually think he loses the Tozen. If those two had actually met on a fight on equal ground, with no real knowledge of the other's abilities, he actually loses a fight to Tozen because he has no idea a way to counter uh, Emma Karogi. He's not a Kenpachi or Ikaku type who can just, you know, uh, go with the flow, feel the blade, and react instinctively. He's not a. Uh, so, and he, while he could certainly do the whole slice in a circle motion with Shinso. And it's that's a theoretical scenario but the, that could happen. The problem is, is that he doesn't know what the deal is with the Bankai. So uh, to, he loses to Tozen, unfortunately. Against Kensei, however, he completely takes on takes out Kensei because Kensei's, Kensei's Shikai is probably better suited against Gin than it is, than his Bankai. His Bankai is a pure melee, well, it's not a melee type, but it's a close range type. And Gin's is most certainly in Shikai on Bankai, not. So, yeah, I, I, I have to give the win to Gein on that. It's just, Kensei's too brash, and honestly, he's a little overconfident in his own abilities, quite frankly. Um, he's He just, I mean, yeah, he, it's clear, he is a captain. He, he has earned the right to be a captain, but he's still, he, he's, a, to quote, uh, Bleach abridged from a uh, blazing Ezra Crow. Uh, you ever heard of the wharf effect? It's when a character is really strong but keeps losing to other characters to prove how strong they are. <laughs> that's kind of a, that's that's a Kensei. That's a Chad. That's a honestly, if you want my my true opinion on that, that's a Toshiro Hitsugaya right there. Like Toshiro is a fan favorite who is pretty powerful, but he really doesn't win that many fights when you break it down. He won. He didn't even, that fight with him and Gein just w was abrupt in a draw. He lost terribly to Aizen. He beat a Fraction. Great. He didn't actually beat Luffy. Luffy. He, the fight was ended. He probably would have won, but we can't call it a win. He didn't beat Holly Bell either. He actually needed help to fight Holly Bell. Um, and then when he get to the Thousand Year Blood Work, he, did, he beat Kang Du after he got help. Uh, and then he got turned into a zombie. And then he couldn't even beat Ger he didn't even beat Gerard after all of his stuff. So he's really only one legitimately one fight ever. Think about that. The fan favorite, considered to be a prodigy, has only won one fight ever. Oh my God, that's sad. <laughs> anyway, I uh, we just talked about this in the last video with, uh, about Hisage, but I actually think Hisage. Beats Gein in the fight in an even fight when with you know knowing Hisagi's full capabilities with his healing abilities and the way his Bankai works, I actually think that he beats Gein in a legitimate fight. I do, uh, because he can just heal from any damage that Gein dishes out to him. If he goes into Bankai, Gein, I don't even think Gein's kill ability would work in Bankai because he's just going to be constantly healing up, using up uh, all their Riatsu. Now, that being said, I think. Basically, what would happen is that the, the thing keeps trying to eat away at his body, but he keeps healing from it. And then basically knowing that he would probably die, he stabs Gein, deactivates the Bankai quickly, and then just cuts him in half. Or just, you know, stabs him right there. Gein's just like, mm, this Bankai, your Bankai works on the same as me. We'll both heal from then. And, and he just coughs up. Let's say, not if I deactivate it. And they just slice him right there. Just... <laughs> <laughs> and then, unfortunately, he would die too. But that still gives him the win, technically, because he won. Oh, he got the better of Gein in that scenario. So, yeah, I actually think in a fair fight with no knowledge of the other's abilities, that Kisagi actually wins the fight uh, against Toshiro. Also, um, now for all the shit talking I did on Toshiro just then. I do think he beats Gein in the fight. His ice still gives him enough of defense, varied, varied, uh, variables and attack. 
Uh, and if the fight drags out long enough, he'll go into the his adult form where he can basically freeze everything in within four seconds. So yeah, uh, it's one of those things that it, his Bankai, his Zanpakuto is one of the most versatile Zanpaktos there is. So th it's one of those things that yeah, Gein, Gein would have a lot of. I mean, we did have a fight between them too, and it was one. It was a fight that was just not. It, it was cut short. Uh, but ultimately, Gein, Hitsugaya actually did have the edge near the end of that fight, because what Gein did was he tried to attack Momo. Um, uh, and, I mean, he almost stabbed him in the face, too, but uh, he tried to attack Momo. So, yeah, Gein, won, uh, Gein broke it off by underhanded techniques. But when you actually look at that fight, he had frozen Gein's hand, Actually, been forced him to open his eyes wider. Truth be told, Gein's eyes I don't think are ever actually truly closed. They're just really, really like, mm, yes, mm. <laughs> kind of like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think Toshio actually would be Gein in a fight. Then one of our first, a lot of fan favorites, Kempachi. Now I hear a lot of, because he did tie up Kempachi in that weird binding cloth uh, before in the very at the end of the uh, first season. First arc, uh, to get him away from uh, Biakia as he was apologizing, but that doesn't actually mean anything, uh, really. Uh, when you break it down in terms of a fight, it's more so that it, that was more played for comedic effect. Although it uh, it does show that he was capable of at least containing a Kampachi at his weakest in the series, because let's be honest, when we see him fight Ichigo. That is his weakest. Uh, that is the weakest we ever know, uh, see him in the entire series. <laughs> Rhyme your head around that. But honestly, yeah, Kampachi's reflexes, his durability, his riatsu, his overall power. Remember how Aizen put it: Shinigami battles are a battle of riatsu, and Aizen had so much riatsu that he was able to offset uh, the two-step kill of Suzume Bashi. Kenpachi is something in a similar vein. His Ryatsu is so massive that I don't even know if Shinsa would be able to pierce him, quite frankly. Uh, maybe you could pierce him, but I don't think it... But it'd probably be one of those things where it's kind of like Tozen Shikai Benehiko, uh, Suzumushi Benehiko, where it kind of just goes into certain ways and, uh, and um, Kenpachi's like, is that really all you got? And he just kind of pulls the pulls the blade forward as... Um, and just yanks a Gein towards him, and he just, you know, slashes down on Gein. Gein maybe blocks, but it's difficult ways. Bankai to Bankai is a tough one. Um, it's very possible... Here's the thing. It's very possible that Kenpachi could... Oh, I wouldn't say very possible, because uh, I was about to say it's possible that his Ryatsu is so large, it might just override the uh, the Bankai's kill effect, but Aizen's were so, uh, what even exceeded Kenpachi's at that point. And it did not. The only thing that saved him was the Hogyuku itself. Um, but more more importantly, I think Kenpachi, frankly, is just too durable. I literally just think he's too durable. And, again, two seasons to Warrior. Plus, you get uh, Nozarashi. And Nozarashi, he can wield Nozarashi effect quite effectively. Not, not even going into the Bankai, where he can just block it with the, with the blade, or the flat of the blade, quite frankly. Cut the blade and other blade in half, and there you go. Because, quite frankly, there's very little Nozorashi couldn't cut through. It cut through the fabric of space, quite frankly. Uh, it didn't cut through Gerard's Valkyrie shield, but I don't think that's a negative on Nozorashi. I think that's a testament to how strong Gerard Valkyrie actually was. Because um, Gerard Valkyrie, it, it's debated on whether or not Lily Barrow or Gerard Valkyrie was really the strongest Sturmitter there was. Uh, I mean, Grammy kind of was to a degree, but that's only because of his actual strip or a strip. And actual abilities, whereas when you talk about the actual whole package, it's clear that Lily Barrow or Gerard was actually the strongest Thermiter. Either way, I don't think Gein could actually beat Kimbachi. Uh Against Mayuri, I also don't think he'd beat Mayuri, because let's be honest, if he tries to, to use Kamishina no Yari's kill, Mayuri's just going to turn to goop. Now, that does technically count as a win on Gein's part, but Mayuri would just come back again later on and continue to fight. What I will say, though, is that... Oh, by the way, yeah, he beat Ikaku straight. We already went over that. I'm not going over Ikaku again. I always, I always bring up that, yes, every one of these guys beat Ikaku because Ikaku lost to everyone except Tozen. Um, 
that's why I don't have a Kaku sh shown here because it would just take up more time and we'd just be repeating the same thing over and over again. Mayuri against Gein is a very weird scenario because Mayuri's abilities are seem to be about paralytics mostly. Uh, and also, it's one of those things. I here's the thing. I don't think that the ability they use uh, where uh, Agisoki Jizo screams and it, like for if you're for four seconds like paralyzes you completely. I don't think you can, he can just do that. He needs to stab. Otherwise, he wouldn't have just stabbed Kempachi and done that. So I, I think he does need to stab you. Uh, but that being said, any slice, any damage that um, he, he gets on Gein. That limb is going to go numb. That limb is just going to be paralyzed. Um, actually, I believe the whole body gets paralyzed, doesn't it? Uh, so, yeah, if he gets one slice in on Gein, which given Mayuri's tactics is not nowhere near impossible, then it's over for Gein. He can't do anything. Uh, that said, it's going to be a matter of getting that hit in on Gein. And Gein is still a tricky individual, to be sure, but Mayuri has nearly all the, uh, all the stuff. He's got bionic limbs. He's got things that regrow his limbs. He can actually re uh, do surgery sew up his nerves within the span of a few seconds which is nuts um he's got jet boots he's got um electronic shields he's got um we're not going with the zombies so that makes no sense uh he's he's a very well prepared individual and then if you go into his bonkai if the giant caterpillar baby with swords and uh can spew deadly poison out so um so I think, and then Gein at that point is now struggling to not die from poison, even though he probably could cut the Bankai in half, I'm going to be honest. Uh, but that leaves Mayuri time to just come in and strategize. So ultimately, I would have to give the win to Mayuri in that. Uh, likewise, for the last two against Urahara, uh, he, again, it's Urahara. He, Urahara plans a thousand steps ahead. He's a brilliant tactician. Uh, ultimately, he would just be able to figure out what's going on, and I think really Gein doesn't have much way of stopping um, Urahara. Urahara could restructure his body to possibly even survive Kamishin Yari's kill effect. So, yeah, it's one of those things that he's. Um, <clears throat> Urahara is too varied. Kino Master, hand to hand master, he's one of the most well rounded characters in the series, is the thing. So that alone puts him well above Gein in terms of difficulty of defeating. And then last but not least is Rukia. Now Rukia is a weird one because, again, Gein can attack at a distance. Gein could slice her in half. But her uh, Shikai and Bankai's abilities make that more difficult because any contact the sword makes with her, it's going or the sword, it's going to freeze. So Gein has to be careful not to damage his own blade. If, and now, luckily, because of Kanashin no Yoyari, he can attack at a distance that the Bankai actually wouldn't necessarily be a um, big issue to him per se. However, if he attacks the Kanashin no Yoyari from a distance, she activates Bankai and just flash freezes his sword. Then he's got a problem because now he's completely defenseless. Assuming she's mastered her Bankai to the point where she can move a little bit in her Bankai now, she can then get close and then freeze his ass. Ultimately, while it would be difficult for him, I do think he would be, uh, or it should be difficult for her, I do think she would ultimately beat Gein in a fight. So, that is where I rank Gein Ichimaru. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, if you want to review something, put in the comments below, let us know, do a review of it at some point. And I just would win, Star Wars, Superior, Magic, What If, anything to do on the channel, put that in the comments below as well, get that at some point. So, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Hit that bell if you want notifications.